Hello everyone. Hi. Welcome to the channel of Wall Street Mojo. Uh, watch the video till the end. And also, if you are new to this channel, then you can subscribe us by clicking the bell icon. Friends, today we are going to learn a topic, uh, a very important thing. It's not a topic, you know, valuation interview questions and answer. Every analyst, every financial analyst, a CFA, MBA, CA, is always uh, worried about what sort of interview interview questions, you know, he or she can be asked and how he or she can be grilled. See, if you want to crack a valuation interview, you need to be better be on your toes and, and, and you know, prepare as much as you can. Because nowadays, you need to go through a, a both a depth and as well as the breadth of uh, for answering the, the interview questions. Having said that, uh, you know, we have a couple of interview questions which are often asked in the valuation interview. And they are by now a way or substitute of your preparation however this guide will you know uh, will help you surely to uh, to direct your attention to the right things so let's get started the first and the foremost question they may ask you is about uh, you know what is uh, free cash flow to the firm fc FC double F. What is the free free cash flow to the firm? See, free cash flow to the firm is used in the DCF uh, modeling. A company generates a cash flow from its operation by selling goods or service. So some of its cash goes back into the business to renew fixed assets and uh, and, and for working capital, uh, you can say requirements, right? And free cash flow to the firm is the excess, you can say. It's the excess of the cash generated over and above the expenses. So free cash flow to the firm goes to the debt holders, debt and the equity holders. The next set of question they can uh, really go for is, uh, okay, before that, uh, you can absolutely, they, they may ask you the formula. So the FCFF formula goes something like this. FCFF is your EBIT into one minus tax, okay? Plus you need to add back any non-cash charges once you do this, you have your changes in uh, working capital, right? And less you need to do capex. The next sort of question that they can go for is what is FC, that is the free cash flow to the equity holders, right? So free cash flow to the equity model is also known one, one of the DCF approach. Uh, along with the FCFF to calculate the stock price. So FCFE means how much the cash a firm can return to its shareholder and is calculated after taking care of all the things like, you know, taxes, capex, capital expenditure, that means debt cash flows and so on and so forth. So FCFE model has, you know, certain limitations like, you know, for example, it is useful only in case where the company's leverage it is, is not volatile and it cannot be applied to the company with changing debt leverage. They can ask you the formula, uh, something like this FCFE and you need to answer that. FCFE is your net income. Okay. You need to add back that is your depreciation and any amortization changes. You need to add any changes in working capital plus capex and you need to add any net borrowings very important okay the third set of question that they can ask is what is dividend discount model what is DDM so dividend discount model is based on the understanding that the fair value of the stock is the present value of all its future dividends right so the intrinsic value can be calculated as that is the P0 by the cash flows divided by uh, you can say the one plus the VAC that is weighted average cost of capital raised to, you can say, N, right? The fourth sort of question that they may ask you is, uh, what is uh, what is the difference or between the enterprise value or the equity value? This is really amazing question and, and th this is really a great question that can be asked. See, this is one of the most basic interview question on valuation, straightforward answer. Enterprise value is your market value of the operating assets. Remember one thing and your equity value. Okay. This is the market value of your shareholders equity. This is the key difference. Okay. The next question that can be asked is what is the difference between the trailing PE and the forward 
PE. So the trailing PE is basically uses you, the trailing PE. You can say the trailing PE uses the historical EPS and uh, the the forward PE uses the forecasted EPS. That's the only difference in this particular scenario. The next sort of question. What are the most common multiple used in valuation? But remember one thing that, you know, while you are answering this, try to answer this with the formula itself, you know, and somewhere try to incorporate the formula. Generally, it's not necessary. Now, in this question, this is the most basic question of the, in, in, in the interview. Uh, they are they're like few common valuation multiples that one can use is like EV by EBITDA. Uh, you can say EV by EBITDA then you have price to the cash flows one can use ev to ebit ratio the peg ratio and so on and so forth you can use pe ratio also as a multiple seventh how would you present the valuation methodologies you can say to investors okay so the best way to approach this is to do your homework first if, if possible you know you find out the valuation of the you know of the firm using each methodology and then try to show to the investor as as the you know football field okay chart one thing you need to remember is you should always show a range of instead of just specific numbers so range would be good rather than specific numbers as 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 one needs to estimate many factors before coming to the conclusion eighth question what are the three most used methods or methodologies for valuation okay and and how would you rank them so this is a pretty common question but it's often asked you would say that you know dcf method comparable comps method there is another called precedent transaction method precedent transaction method these are the three methods that have been used for valuation the question about ranking is a little bit tricky you know because usually precedent transaction method are, are higher than the comparable transaction uh, as as control premium is built into it and in case of the dcf it can go both ways it can be highest or it can be lowest too so depending on the assumption you would make during the computation the next sort of question that you can go for other than this three what are the other methods uh, what are the other methodologies for valuation and you know uh, give some analysis so the other valuation method are like lbo analysis it lbo helps to find to determine how much the pe of the firm would be able to pay to hit the target irr okay remember this thing generally the target IRR happens in the range of 15 to 25 you can say the next thing the next uh, methodology is the sum of parts now this is this has two steps the first is each part is valued each part is valued separately and then they are added together the next is the liquidation valuation method the whole idea of the liquidation valuation is to imagine that all the three that all the assets of the company are sold off and then once the figure comes up the liabilities are subtracted from the figure and this is the capital of all the investor tenth question what is the what is precedent transaction method what is the precedent transaction analysis so in simple terms, uh, precedent transaction analysis is the valuation method which takes the past transaction. You know, it takes past transactions into account of similar companies to value a company. If you break down the firstly that we need to do in if, if the similar companies are been chosen, okay, uh, and and based on the similar feature or being in the similar industry. The second thing is the size of the uh, transaction that should be similar. The third is the type of the transaction and the feature of the buyers would be same. And the fourth, the transaction which happened more recently, you know, have been considered more valuable. The fifth thing is the estimate is being made on the basis of the above factors. These are some of the questions that one can consider for their interviews. So that's it uh, for this particular topic. If you have learned and enjoyed watching this video, please like and comment on this video and subscribe to our channel for the latest updates. Thank you, everyone. Cheers.